This video is about heating curves. Heating curves are used to represent how the temperature of a substance changes as the substance is heated. So along the bottom here we've got the heat absorbed or you might have drawn a graph to show um, time along the bottom in seconds or minutes as you heated a substance up and along the y-axis here we've got temperature so this particular heating curve um, is for water you will notice that on these heating or cooling curves you have some flat points here you've got one at the top here for the water and one down the bottom now these flat points represent the change of state so down here if we label this one this is the melting point which is also the same as the freezing point because it depends which way you read the graph if you're heating something up it will go from a solid to a liquid and have the melting point on the opposite way around if you're cooling something down it will turn from a liquid into a solid and therefore it will be its freezing point so the melting point and the freezing point are at the same temperature and for water this is around zero degrees C so this point here is its change of state as it turns from a liquid into a solid and we can imagine what those particles would look like we'd have a liquid where they'd be rolling over each other freely moving and freely flowing to a solid arrangement a regular pattern of particles with these particles or you may know them as atoms or vibrating the second change of state point showed by this horizontal part of the graph is the boiling point now the boiling point is when something turns from a liquid into a gas and it is also the same as the condensing point so we'll label this part two this is the boiling point which is also the condensing point because in the same way you could read the graph um, either by looking at something being heated up from a liquid and turning into a gas or you could read it the other way whereby something turns from a gas back into liquid and when something turns from a gas into a liquid it condenses so this change of state here is the boiling point or condensing point which at water happens at 100 degrees C now the 0 degrees C and the 100 degrees C are only applicable to water other substances would have different melting and boiling points so they would have their change of state points at different points on the graph depending on what temperature that they melt or boil at for the boiling point you would have a liquid turning into a gas whereby the gas particles would move around randomly in all directions and in the opposite way around if you turn from a gas into a liquid you condense so the condensing point would be the same place as the boiling point now pure water would have the change of state points at 0 and 100 degrees C but if we were to add salt to the water it will do a couple of things now salt will raise the boiling point of water so if you added salt to water your change of state would not be at 100 degrees C but it will be a little higher depending on how much salt you add so your horizontal line on your graph would be higher if 
that was salt water. Similarly, adding salt will lower the freezing point of water as well. So down here where we've got the change of state, this would be lower if we added salt. So we'll put with salt here. Now this is really important for all road users in, in the winter. This is the exact reason why we add salt to roads in the winter because we don't want the water on the roads to freeze because if it does freeze it becomes very slippery and very dangerous. So if we add a bit of salt to it um, with all those large yellow trucks going out spraying salt all over the roads the salt will mix with the water and it lowers the freezing point. That means it's got to be a lot colder for the water on the roads to freeze so hopefully it will stay as a liquid for a lot longer and that means we won't get the ice forming and we won't get the danger on the roads. So salt lowers the freezing point but increases the boiling point for water.